Hi, I'm Sharon Bill. Welcome to my Theory Tuition series where I'm working with you step by step through the ABRSM Theory Grades. We're making great headway through the 2016 booklet for Grade 4. We're on to the last part of Paper C. There are lots of resources available to help you on my website. If you visit SharonBill.com, you'll find some free PDF information sheets. They're available in US letter or A4 and they accompany each step of this series. There's also a page with links to all of my YouTube video tutorials and you can also find information about the books that I have available. I've written how to take your ABRSM music theory exam and it's an exam technique book full of tips and techniques on how to best prepare for your exam and how to best make use of the time in the exam room. So if you visit SharonBill.com you'll find it all there. If you can give me a like, that would be fab, that would be really encouraging to me. I hope you're enjoying this as much as I do and it's helpful to you. Please subscribe to my channel to keep updated, there's lots more in store. And so we're going to finish this paper 3, so if you turn with me to page 18, so the third paper, paper C, and we're on the question 5 at present, so you will need a pencil eraser and ruler and I do recommend that you just write out your circle of fifths so you've got all of your scales, major and minor keys. If you're not sure about the circle of fifths there's, you'll find a video link in the description below. It's always helpful to just think of those keys once and once only and then you can keep referring to them instead of having to keep scratching your head and rethinking it. So we need to describe these melodic intervals found within this melody as bracketed and so you will need to know your key signatures because if you remember we always count the bottom note as the key note um, regardless of this key signature here this just bears in mind to affect what is flattened and sharpened but the bottom note we always imagine is the key note and so I suggest you have a go of this on your own. First of all, it's always better to have a go. It doesn't matter if you go wrong. It's much more profitable to learn by your mistakes. So I'm hoping you've tried this on your own and we'll now work through this together. And so, interval number one is a, if we count this as the first, next step is the second. It's a second of some sort. So if you only wrote second, then you know that you've got half marks. And so, have a go at the next bit but if you find you've gone wrong in the exam you've certainly got half marks by counting the distance the interval between the notes now here we've got an E flat and next to that is an F F is part of E flat major scale and so we would describe that as a major second so number two first of all let's get the number we've got a one three five seven so it's a seventh now we're going from C sharp to B flat now that's quite a tricky interval so let's just work it in steps so we'll ignore the, the sharp and the flat which comes from the key signature so C to B would be major B is part of the major scale of C major C to B flat comes down and makes the interval smaller to minor and then the bottom note being raised makes it smaller again so it becomes diminished. So we've shrunk the interval twice and it's become diminished. So we have a diminished seventh. If you find that difficult to visualise you can always refer to your piano keyboard. I would always sketch this out as well. We can see C to B is a seventh, one, always count one. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and then that would be major flatten the B it becomes minor and then we can see as we raise the bottom note to C sharp we've made the interval smaller again and it becomes diminished so by all means refer to a piano keyboard to just see how those intervals move chromatically with the sharps and flats let's carry on so first of all let's just get the interval in, in terms of the number of steps, one, three, five, seven. Oh, I think I'm at the wrong bit. Yes, I am. Yeah, here we go. It's this bit here. One, three. We've got a third. 
So F natural to A natural would be major third. And then because the bottom note is raised, we've made it smaller, that's a minor third. So we could think of it that way, or also you know that F sharp minor has an A natural as well. But I find it easier to work from the F to A, that's major, and then you raise the bottom one, the intervals become smaller, and so it's a minor third. Number four here. So we've got one, two, three, four. Now C to F would be a perfect fourth. There's no major or minor for fourths, fifths and octaves, remember. And then we've raised the fourth by adding a sharp and so it becomes augmented. So we have an augmented fourth. Seem to be wandering there. Okie dokie, last one. So we've got one, three, five. C to G is a perfect fifth and nothing's been altered. There's no sharps remaining. So it's just a perfect fifth. There we go, that's that question complete. Let's have a look at this next one. It's asking us to transpose this melody up an octave and change from bass clef to treble clef. So we do need to change octave, but if we use middle C as our anchor point, we'll know that we're not getting too many octaves out or we're going the wrong way. So at the moment, we've got the F below middle C. So to go up an octave, we need the F above middle C. So there's middle C, C, D, E, F will take us to there. And once we've got that starting point, that's the hardest bit complete. And so, keep your notes aligned because there's a lot of notes, quite a lot of blobs to fit in here. And if you spread, you're going to run out of room. So just keep everything aligned and that way you won't get lost. If you find that you're getting lost and losing track, by all means, sort of cover over where you've got to if it helps you to not lose your place. So that's the same note. And now we want a one, three five six one three five six takes us to the d and that's correct because there's the d above middle c and we're an octave higher now and every good boy deserves back down a fifth takes us to the g um spreading a little there let's catch that before we get too far out and we know we're a step above the note we started from a third with a flat, one, two, three, takes us to B, that's correct. Down a step, we'll worry about stems afterwards because we're going to have to work out which way the stems go. Same note again, I suppose we can put ties just as some visual clues to where we are. Back to that D, one, three, four, one, three, four, takes us to the D. Always check your intervals as well and then refer back to anchor points and then you've got a double check back down a fourth to where we were just to the A and now it's a third which takes us oh oh dear to C and then down a step with a flat just uh, sort that down a third down another third Takes us to an E, back up a third, G. Okay, we've got a big jump now, so let's see where we are here. One, three, five, seven. One, three, five is the ledger line, seven is the next ledger line. That takes us to an A, and then that's definitely an A. So we're an octave. There we go, we should be there. We're on the A below middle C, that's correct. And then here, we've got an octave jump, one, three, five, seven, eight. So we're going to go up a whole octave to this A here, which is one step above the G we were finished on. So that's correct. Let's put the tie in, although we may have to change the way that goes depending on the stems. Down a step, down a step, down a step. So we're on the E, that's correct. 
and that one there is the same note we started on so that's correct down a step and now we're going one three five six one three five six to the B flat and that makes harmonic sense that it's the B flat that keeps on being added I suppose it could have been a very chromatic melody one three five one three five the E, which is where we started on that bar, up a third to the G, down a one, three, five, seven, oh dear, I keep doing that, dearie me, one, three, five, seven, takes us back to that A, that's correct, so we're right there, back to the G, back up a seventh, and then down a step next door to the F sharp. There we go, that's the thinking done there. We've now got to decide what to do about the stem. So this stem will have to go up, of course, for the crotchet, the quarter note. Now here, these four are going to be grouped together. All of these three need to have the stem going up so it outvotes that one. I think I'll use a ruler. Just a bit time consuming now more than anything and now these have the stems going down these have the stems going up but this one requires mostly away so we'll have to go with this one because that one requires the stem down more so So actually, oh, put the other beam in. I'm going to have to just change the way that tie goes. Goes there. Oh, what am I doing? Dearie me, I think I've got a dodgy lead. Okay, so stems. All of these can point upwards. I'm going to be very gentle with the pencil here. And then here, these are going to have to go upwards. Nice and simple there. All these are definitely going upwards. And that's that done. There we go. Okay, so we'll move on to the last question. And these are your triads and keys. This is the nice bit. I particularly enjoy this question. So they've generously told us that the key is A major and we've just got to name the chords here. So you can either use the Roman numerals or you can use the technical names. So if we're in A major, we want chords 1, 4 and 5. We know that A is chord 1, A, B, C, D is chord 4, a, B, C, D, E is chord 5, and if it's built up of the 1st, 3rd and the 5th, A, B, C, D, E, oh, E, and then we can see there's our 5th starting the dominant chord, so D, F, A, E, G, B, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, that's it. So now we can easily recognise these chords, so here we've got an A, E, C, A. The key signature will take care of any of the sharps that are required. So that's obviously a chord 1. So we can either put 1 or tonic. So here, D, A, D, F, that's a chord 4. That's the subdominant. And then E, G, E, B is chord 5 or the dominant. There we go. And then in this last one, we've now got to actually write the triad and not describe it. So we've got a choice whether it's going to be a major or minor key, but they actually tell us which one to go. So a major key with four flats, B, E, A, D, would be A flat major. And so one, four, five, if A, 
is the first, the flats are dealt with in the key signature. A, B, C, D, E is the fifth, E, G, B. And so that's what we need to write. The tonic, the triad, the dominant, sorry, in this new key in the alto clef. So this is an E, G, B. If you're not sure about the alto clef, if you think there's middle C, so the B is going to be next door down a step. So here we've got a minor key. If it was a major key, it would be D major. And the related minor key is B minor. And so the tonic triad of that is B. And that's the first note of the triad, the first note of the tonic. B, C, D, E, F. And so that's the triad we need to write. So there's our B, D, F. The last one, so we've got we need to write a minor key again here. We've got a key signature of four sharps, it could be E major, but we want the minor key, and so the related minor would be C sharp minor. So chord one is based on the C sharp, the key signature will deal with all of that, we don't need to worry. So one, two, three, four is C, D, E, F. A, C, F, G, A, B, C, first, third and fifth notes to build the triad. So we need an F, A, C, and so there's F, A, and middle C. If you didn't feel like using ledger lines, you could drop down an octave and write it F, A, C. There we go. So just take things a step at a time and it's easy to work through the process. I do hope that that's helpful to you. I hope that you're enjoying working through these papers and it's a benefit to you. If you can give me a like, that'd be really fab. And subscribe to my channel to keep updated. Please do go to my website, visit SharonBuild.com and make use of all the resources available to you there. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.